Hello everyone. So today we're going to take a look at some radioactivity questions. Now I want to split these videos up into three parts um, based on three of the questions that I'm doing so that the videos wouldn't be too long. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So we have here, explain what is meant by the term radioactive decay. We're just going to read through the question firstly. State the name of three, state the name and the nature of three types of radioactive emissions. During a nuclear fission reaction, the uranium isotope U35-92 is struck by a neutron and splits into barium and krypton and two neutrons. And we are given the table of masses, um, the speed of light. And the questions are, represent the reaction in the standard form of a nuclear equation given that the atomic mass of barium is 144 and the atomic number of krypton is 36. Calculate A, the total mass of the starting products, the uranium nucleus and the neutron, the total mass of the final products, the barium and krypton nuclei, and the two neutrons. Explain why the answers are different and calculate the energy released in the reaction and to tell us where would be um, deduce where the form of the energy will appear. So let's begin. So the first question asks us to define what is radioactive decay, what is meant by it. So radioactive decay, let's write that. So radioactive decay is the spontaneous disintegration of atomic nuclei. Right, that's an E right here. Atomic nuclei. So radioactive decay is a spontaneous disintegration of atomic nuclei. Part B, state the name and the three types, um, state the name and nature of the three types of radioactive emissions. So there are three types of radioactive emissions. We have the alpha particle. So let's label that. The alpha particle. Right, so we could say that this is the name and we can write the nature right next to it. So the nature is we have two protons, two neutrons. Right, so recall that this is an atomic nuclei and they are tightly bounded. Okay. The other particle is a beta particle. All right, and that is just one electron. And the last particle is a gamma particle. Which is simply a high frequency electromagnetic wave. All right, so this is the three particles and their natures. So the next question is um, part C. So we have uranium-235-92 and we have one neutron. We are given in the question that the atomic mass of barium is 144 and the atomic number of krypton is 36. So let's write that equation. What, let's write what we have. So we have uranium 235 92 plus a neutron. All right, so the charge of a neutron is zero, the mass of it is one to give us barium 
plus Krypton plus two neutrons. Remember, we, we have to put that, the charge and the mass. Now we are told that the atomic mass of barium is 144 and the um, atomic number of Krypton is 36. So we have 36 here. Now we need to finish by putting in what values here and here. All right, so we could use the conservation of mass for that. So we need these numbers to add up to 92. We need the atomic numbers to add up to what is on the left and is on the right. So we can use a different color to put that in, which is purple. So it's essentially 92 minus 36, which is 56, so barium is 56 here. And the atomic mass of Krypton, we need to minus, this is two and 144, that's 146. So that's 235 minus 146 which is 89. All right, so we can verify that. So 144 plus 89, and we add in two, all right? Because we need, um, we have two neutrons. So that's our answer. This is our part C, I. Okay, so part two asks us, to calculate the total mass of the starting products. So part 2a, the total mass of the starting products, that's this. Now they would, they would like that mass in kilograms. So the mass of a uranium, we could go to the table and we would get that to be exactly 390.898, 390.898. Sorry, 989. All right, of course, we can put the by 10 to the minus 27 shortly. And the mass of one neutron is 1.675. Now, what am I going to do? I will put the by 10 to the minus 27 outside because they are both by 10 to the minus 27. All right, if we look here, we could factor that out since it's a common multiple. All right, and we could just add to get the total of total mass before. And we will get that to be 392.664 by 10 to the minus 27. And don't forget our units. So this is the mass before. So you could write that as mass before, right? Um, part B asks us for the mass after, All right? Let's check that. Total mass of the final reactants, which is the barium, krypton, and neutrons. So we have barium is 238.893. Similarly, so you can write mass after. All right, so the first one is 238.893. Plus, now remember, we will just, we'll just put the by 10 to the minus 27 afterwards. All right, the mass of Krypton is 149.241. All right, let's just, and the neutrons is 1.675. Recall that we have two of those. So we have plus um, two times the 1.675, which is 3.35. All right, so we just have to multiply the neutrons by two, the mass of the neutron by two, because we have two of it. All right, and of course we have by 10 to the minus 27. Now I've run out of, it, of room here, so allow me to just write the units lower down. And when we add up those, what would we get? We would get three hundred and ninety-one point 
0.484 by 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So notice the mass before and the mass after are different. Okay. So part three axis, explain why the answers are different, why the masses are different. Now we can explain that using Einstein's law. So part C, um, triple I, they are different. because the mass lost is given off as energy according to the formula E equal delta M C squared. Now, why we use delta M is because it is a mass defect we are dealing with, and you'll see how to get that mass defect shortly. Okay, so part four, access to calculate the energy released and to also deduce the form in which this energy will appear. So the energy released, so firstly, we calculate the mass defect delta M would be this value, subtract this value. All right, so we have 392.664 plus, sorry, minus 291.484. And we could always put the by 10 to the minus 27. Now, this is only allowed since they have the same um, standard form or the same product as by 10 to the minus 27. Now, if this one was by 10 to the minus 5 and this one was by 10 to the minus 6, a little bit more work would have to been done to, in order to do that. But we have a little bit of freedom here since they both have the by 10 to the minus 27. So simplifying this, what do we get? 1.18 by 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So this is our mass defect. So the energy released, or the energy that we could get from this, is the mass defect times the speed of light squared. I recall that the speed of light was three by 10 to the minus, sorry, three by 10 to the eight meters per second. All right, that's given right here. So let's get that done, find the energy. So we have 1.18 by 10 to the minus 27, multiplied by the speed of light squared. Simplifying this, this is the same as 1.18 by 10 to the minus 27, multiplied by nine by 10 to the um, 16. Multiplying that, we will get 1.062 by 10 to the minus 10 joules. Now we were told to deduce where this energy would be used or, or where we could observe this type of energy or what, where it will appear. Now there are two ways, there are two ways of answering this question. The first way being um, in the form of the production of energy. So this energy can be used in the production of any, um, in the production of electricity 
in the relevant um, nuclear power plants, or it could also be used, or it could also be used as a nuclear bomb. All right, and that actually concludes this question. Now, if you're interested in the other question, this would be the other question here. So you could take a look at it and perhaps give it a try before, before seeing the solutions in the next video. So thank you again for coming. All right, I hope this helped in some way. And I'll see you all when we come to look at number two.